morning everyone. I'm Mrs. Lasley and I'm an intervention specialist at Riverside School and this is my daughter Elle and this is my dog Echo. She wanted to be in today's video so she's going to join us for as long as she sits there. So today is a Father's Day episode and we're going to create a non-traditional card for your father or father figure in your life. Usually when you celebrate Father's Day you'll go to the store and you'll buy a card or you'll get a piece of construction paper and write dad a special note. But today we're gonna to do a little fun uh, card or poster um, to celebrate your father or father figure in your life. So you're going to need a few supplies for today's fun activity. You're going to need a poster board. And I prefer white. I would I'd put a white poster board. You're going to need different color markers. You're going to need tape. Masking tape would work out as well. And L, you're going to need several types of candies. You are going to need 100 grand, Milky Ways, Kit Kats, Good and Plenty, Pop Rocks, Hershey Kisses and Smarties. Now you could use whatever candy you would like, but this is the candy that I've chosen to create this card. So if you want to copy our card, that would be fine as well. So you ready to start? Yes, I am. Okay. So we already created the card for you and we're just going to fill in the blank. Now this card is a little bit unique. You're going to use the candy to play on the words on the candy to create those sentences. So we use these candies and created sentences around the words that are on the candy, okay? So you, every time you create a card, you always address the card. So our card says, Dear Dad, and you put a comma. The first sentence says, Happy Father's Day, with an exclamation point. The first sentence, the second sentence is, I wanted to buy you a big gift, but I didn't have, oh, there's a blank there. What candy bar could we fill in that one? But I didn't have 100 grand. 100 grand, because 100 grand is a lot of money, right? Yes. So you're going to take your tape and you're going to roll your tape. And remember, you can use scotch tape, you can use masking tape. You're going to put it on the back and you're going to fill in that blank once you write that card. So I'm gonna hold it because it's gonna get a little bit heavy, so I'm gonna hold it, okay? If I did, I would fly you to the blank and back. What would we fill in for that? Milky Way. Milky Way, because we know Milky Way is in outer space. It's far, far away, right? Yes. So if we had 100 grand, we could fly into the Milky Way and back. So we're gonna take our tape, we roll our tape, and we're gonna put this so that dad could see that. And then we read our next sentence. I didn't think buying a blank was a good idea. What would not be a good idea to buy dad for Father's Day? A Kit Kat. A cat, probably. Um, Cause maybe dad doesn't like cats or the cats are a lot of work to take care of. Okay, so we take the tape and we put that. So it wouldn't be a good idea to buy him a cat, maybe. Instead, I will be quiet so you can have good and plenty of rest because I'm sure dad likes to rest a lot. So can you hold this for me? Yeah. Thank you. While I get the tape. And now the good and plenty is a little bit heavier, so you might need more tape. I'm just going to use one just to show you. have good and plenty so can you hold that maybe there okay I got this okay good and plenty of rest okay when you wake up I will give you lots of pop rocks oh I'm sorry I messed up when you wake up I will shout out to the world that my pop rocks. pop rocks because Pop is another name for Dad, right? Or even Grandpa, right? My Pop Rocks. And give you lots of... 
Kisses. Kisses. And so you can do the whole bag of kisses or you can open the bag if it gets too heavy and you could just put one Hershey kiss right on there. Lots of kisses right there. Okay. And then the last, the closing would be enjoy your day. Love your smarties. Smarty because you guys are all smarties out there, right? So sometimes if you don't want to write your name on the bottom of it, you could, you could be silly and write Smarties. You could also write your names when you're done too. So if we read this whole card back, do you want to read it back for us? Yes. Okay. So it's going to say, Dear Dad, Happy Father's Day. I wanted to buy you a big gift, but I didn't have 100 grand. If I did, I would fly you to M Milky Way and back. I didn't think buying a c cat was a good idea. Instead, I will be quiet so you can have good and plenty of rest. When you wake up, I will, will, shout. will shout out to the world that my pop rocks and give you lots of kisses. Enjoy your day. Love your Smarties. And then I took the marker, good reading by the way, I took the markers and I put little stars, you could put balloons, whatever you want to decorate your dad's uh, candy gram card and uh, I think he'll love it. Now if your dad does not enjoy eating candy, um, I also suggest you can use protein bars. If you go to the protein bar aisle or the nutritional bar aisle, there are a lot of nutritional bars that you can use the words off the nutritional bars to create a candy gram for a healthier idea if your dad is um, health conscious. Um, so I hope you enjoy this. Do you think your dad's going to like this? Yes. Okay. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and father figures out there. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, it's Mrs. Egan from Sunbeam Elementary coming to you from my kitchen. Where this morning we're going to be working on learning how to make a yummy, hearty, and healthy meal for any of those special men in your life to give them on Father's Day. Dads uncles, grandfathers, big brothers, and even big cousins would eat this meal up, especially because it's made with love and also great ingredients. We're gonna get right into it. As always, anytime you're in the kitchen and anytime you're making food, it's great to have an adult or an older sibling help you because you always wanna be safe. And today we're gonna to be using the stove top and we're also gonna be using the toaster oven. If you do not have a flat skillet in the middle of your stove top like I do, you could use a pan and then you would flip what we're making one by one instead of a couple at a time. And I'm gonna show you what we're making right now. Here is our grocery list. I only had to get a few things from the store, so I wanted to show you what we had. You do not have to use the exact brand of product that I used. You can use whatever you find around your house or whatever you typically buy from the store. These are just some of the things that I had. We're gonna be making pancakes, so that's one of the most important things that you need to have on the top of your grocery list. Pancake mix. You're also gonna need milk, vegetable oil, eggs for extra protein because any man needs lots of protein to keep busy. Maple syrup, which I typically have a lot of, but I forgot to buy some more from the store. So we're gonna make this work. It's actually also kind of great that I can show you that you can substitute honey if you do not have maple syrup. And you can actually substitute jelly if you don't like maple syrup or honey. I have some food colors because we're gonna do something a little special with our pancakes. And cooking spray to put on our stove top so that our pancakes don't stick when we flip them. You can see that we have a variety of bowls because we're gonna be dividing our pancakes into three different colors. We have some measuring spoons and we also have a spatula to whip everything up. And away we go.
Okay, so I have put one and three quarter cup of our pancake mix into the bowl. And the next step is to add the milk. I like to add more milk than it calls for and replace the water with milk because it just adds some extra protein to our pancakes. So I have a cup of milk I'm going to pour in. And then it calls for actually an extra third of a cup. So I'm actually just going to use that same measuring cup and pour it in. And if you ever find that your pancakes are a little too runny, you can always add a little bit of pancake mix to them and they will come out great. I'm going to add a little bit of egg. It only calls for one egg. And it's not hard to crack an egg, but you just have to take your time. There we go. No shells in the bowl. That's the most important thing when cracking an egg, because those will be crunchy. And then we are going to just mix it up. Our pancakes are smooth and all mixed up. As you can see, I divided them into three bowls because we're gonna put three colors to make our pancakes. Our first is gonna be green. And I just grabbed some plastic forks to mix it up. And you can make these as dark or as light as you want. I think I'm gonna make them a little darker because when you cook the pancakes, sometimes the color doesn't show through from the browning of the pancake on the skillet. So it's good to make them pretty dark so you can tell what color the pancakes are. So here's our green. It's a pretty good green. Kinda looks like the Grinch. And then we're gonna take purple. I put a lot of purple in there. And you can kind of be the judge. If you think it's too light, you can add more. And if it comes out too dark, just cook it up anyway and see how it turns out. And if you don't like it, then you can make a new batch. And then I also have pink. I would have used blue, but we ran out of blue. So we're just going to use pink and maybe it'll come out a little bit more red. All right. Now, I thought it would be really fun to try to spell the word dad in pancakes. And it might be a little tricky. So this is where you would have somebody older help you because getting the pancakes onto the skillet and cooked up is kind of a two person job if you're a little person. First thing you wanna do anytime you have pancakes on a skillet is spray it down. And that way your pancakes won't stick. You will also need a spatula for flipping. So I'm going to get a spoon. Oh, it's tangled up in there. Let me grab it. There we go. And I'm going to start with red. I think I'm going to do red, green, and then purple. And here is how we're going to do it. I'm gonna take a little bit and I'm gonna to attempt to make the letter D. Have a straight line down. And 
in a line across and you can kind of fill it in a little bit just so it's thick just like that and you want to watch for the bubbles and when you see it starting to bubble on the top you can see little bubbles starting to pop that's when you know it's almost time to flip okay my bubbles have been popping so I am going to get my spatula up under both parts and flip simple as that while you are waiting for your pancakes to bubble up and be ready to flip you can take some bacon, any kind that you have or that you find in the store, and tear it in two. Cut it right down the middle in half to create the shape of a heart. If you have a toaster oven, you can put these in the toaster, or you can just wait for your pancakes to be done and put them on the pan or on the skillet that you used, and they'll be done in no time. Here we have it, our finished product with D-A-D, -D, our three colors, and four pieces of heart-shaped bacon and our maple syrup. And like I said, if you like honey on your pancakes or you like jelly, even better. It would add more color. If you're feeling extra crafty, you can make a placemat out of cardstock and markers. My daughter made this one. And then you can serve your plate right on top of your placemat. I hope you guys had a great time learning how to make an awesome meal for the men in your life that you want to bless on Father's Day. Give those dads, grandpas, uncles, big brothers, cousins a huge hug. Tell them how much you love them and dig in and enjoy some delicious food. Bye guys.
cushioned spot. I'm like climate change. As you can see, it's a large lake. It stretches from north to south. And Lake Pymatuming is in both Ohio and Pennsylvania. going to do is put our worm on the hook you're gonna grab your worm and the hook and you're gonna attach it now hooks are very sharp so you may need some adult supervision to help you putting the worm on. Okay, there we go. The worm on the hook. The second thing we're gonna do is cast the pole out into the lake. On this pole, we're going to press this button. You're going to hold it. You can then bring the pole back behind you. And when then you're going to move your arm forward and release the button to cast the pole. And there you can see the bobber and the water. The bobber is going to let you know if you have a fish on your line. So I'm going to reel it in again and I'm going to show you one more time how to cast the pole. So when I reel it in I take this knob and I'm moving it forward. Okay so one more time we're going to press this button, bring the pole behind you, move your arm forward and release and you cast it your line. So we're gonna wait now for the fish to bite. And while we are waiting, let's learn about the different types of fish. There are several types of fish. Perch. Bluegill, catfish, large mouth bass, small mouth bass. Crappie, walleye, muskie. What type of fish is that? That's the bluegill fish. What kind of fish is this? It's a perch. What 
like the fish is this. It's a catfish. What type of fish is that? Catfish. I think we have a bite. Let's reel it in to see if we got a fish. Oh boy. Oh. 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 Big catfish. We got another fish. What type of fish is this? It's a perch. <laughs> it's a perch. <laughs> wow, what a beautiful day it was for fishing. It was. Thank you for coming on our fishing adventure. Look at all the fish we caught. your father, grandfather, uncle, or someone else special in your life enjoys to do, and make sure you plan to do that on Father's Day. Hi, my name is Miss Marshall, and I'm a physical therapist from the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. This week, we're celebrating Father's Day, and I'm going to go over a Father's Day fitness challenge. You can either do this along with your dad or fatherly figure that you have in your life, or you guys can compete against each other to see who's strong or if you're just as strong as dad is. We're gonna go over five different activities and I'm gonna show you some modifications with those activities. And then at the end, I'm also gonna show you a little bit of a chart to see and keep track of all the different activities we completed during this Father's Day Fitness Challenge. Okay, let's go over the first activity. The first activity is a plank. So I'm gonna show you some different ways that you can modify this, but when competing, you can see who can hold a plank the longest, or if you can hold a plank together for 30 seconds. So let me show you some modifications. So the most traditional way to hold a plank is you're gonna to wanna to get on your hands and on your feet. So your hands are gonna be right underneath your shoulders, and then your feet are gonna, or your legs are gonna be close together. The most important thing when keeping a plank is making sure that your back stays nice and straight. So you're going to get onto your hands which are right underneath your shoulders, your feet and legs close together. You want your head to be in line with your neck, kind of looking past your fingertips. If this is too challenging, a way to modify this is by getting onto your knees, hands still underneath your shoulders like this. You can also put your forearms onto the ground like this and hold a plank. But let's see if we can try to hold one just like this for 30 seconds. Or, like I said before, you can compete against your dad to see who can hold it the longest. The second activity we're going to go over are sit-ups, which I think most everybody does, but I just want to make sure that we're doing them correctly when completing these. Now you guys can either do 10 sit-ups together or you guys can compete and see who can do as many sit-ups in 30 seconds. So we're going to start off laying on our back, knees bent. You can have your hands in a couple different place, placements. You can either have them behind your head like this, have them across your chest like this. The most important thing to remember when completing a sit-up is not by kind of pushing through with your head and neck but that you're using your stomach muscles. So let's do one with our hands behind our head like this, and you're gonna wanna think about squeezing your stomach muscles to sit up nice and tall. So you're gonna come up, and that would be one, and then back down. So you're gonna try to do 10 of those together, or see who can do the most in 30 seconds. The third activity are push-ups, which I have to say are the most challenging for me, and there's different ways that you can do push-ups. 
So if you're competing against each other, you can see who can do the most push-ups in 30 seconds, or if you can do 10 push-ups together. So we're gonna start off by doing a traditional push-up. So your hands are gonna be a little bit um, wider than your shoulders, and you're gonna go up onto your toes. You're gonna slowly bend your elbows, making sure that you stay nice and straight, and then you're gonna push back up. So you're gonna go down and up. A modification is you can go onto your knees and do the same um, action with your arms. You're going to slowly go down and back up. Okay. So the fourth activity is long jump to see who can jump the longest. Now when doing this activity, you're going to want to try to find some sort of uh, place markers and you can either use, I have a stick or I also have these circle markers that I'm gonna use. So let me get my mat out of the way. And it's important to have at least one spot so you know where you're starting off, so you're gonna stand on. And you're gonna keep your feet close together and you're gonna bend at your knees. You can use your arms for a little bit momentum and then you're gonna to try to jump forward as far as you can. And then you're gonna mark that spot with another marker. Then whoever you're competing against, they're gonna start at the same place, and then they're gonna try to go at least a little bit farther, or they might be right behind, and mark that to see who can jump the furthest. The last activity we're gonna do is a race. So you can compete against your dad to see who can race, or who's the fastest. You can either just go out for a little jog together, or if you're doing this inside, just kind of jog in place for a minute. But when doing a race, you want to make sure you have a clear start and stop line. And then you also want someone to say, ready, set, go, so it's nice and fair. So I'm going to use this green circle as my start and finish line, because I'm going to run a big circle around the area that I'm at. So since I'm here by myself, I'm gonna be the one saying, ready, set, go. And then I'm gonna run as fast as I can back to this spot. Ready, set, go. I made it back to the finish line. We completed all five activities. I'm gonna go over some different ways you guys can track it, either that you're competing with each other or if you guys are doing this along together. So let me get those. Okay. So if you guys are just uh, completing these activities together, you can kind of make a sheet with some check boxes listing all the different activities along. And as you complete them, you can put a little check mark in each of the boxes over here. If you guys are competing against each other, you guys can kind of do a little bit of a chart. And so for example, the first one, plank, if you were able to hold it long, you would put either an X or a check mark right here sit-ups, maybe dad was able to do more, you can put an X or a check mark right here and go all the way down to see who was the strongest. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful Father's Day and you guys are able to complete some of these fitness activities and challenges. Thanks. Hi, I'm Miss Valentine, an occupational therapist with Cleveland Metropolitan School District, and we're going to talk today about making a little present for some of the father figures in our life. On Sunday this weekend, it's Father's Day. This is a day we use to celebrate our fathers or other father figures like our uncles, our grandparents, or maybe brothers, any other men in your life that are like a father figure to you. We're gonna celebrate today by making little uh, a picture or a poster um, that shows our, our dads or father figures how much we love them. So our supplies that we need to make this craft is tape, poster board, there's a couple other things we're gonna show too. Paint and scissors. Alrighty, so Kylie, my niece here, has a canvas that we got at the dollar store. She's gonna do her craft on a canvas. And Colton, my nephew, has a piece of wood also that we got at the dollar store that he's gonna paint to give to his dad. So you can do, uh, do this activity with a poster board and frame it. You could do it and just hang it on the wall with some tape, um, or you can do a canvas or a piece of wood or anything like that too. 
Um, to get started, our first step is going to be to write whatever message you would like in tape. So if you're gonna write, I love dad, or we love papa, or just dad, daddy, you can write it for one of your uncles, whatever you wanna write. You can ask an adult for help if you need help spelling the word or writing the letters. You can use masking tape or painter's tape. Um, other types of tape might work too, but this is what we had in our house, so these are the two we're gonna try. So we'll go ahead and get started. What message do you wanna make on yours? Dad. She wants to write dad. All right, Colton, what do you wanna write on yours? Um, I love you, Papa. I love you, Papa, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna spell out our message in tape. That's step one. Okay, so Colton, I want you to try this tape, and Kylie, you can try this tape. One of the things I did when I was writing out those these messages in tape was use scissors instead of tearing it. It helps the line stay a little bit cleaner, but if you don't have scissors around, you can just tear the tape. Do you want me to cut some pieces for you? All right, so we're gonna write dad. So how do you spell dad? D-A-D. D-A-D, that's a pretty simple one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make our D first. Do you want this to be your line? And then you just push it down, good. We can either do, you can have an adult help kind of round the edges out to make your D, or you can do it just with a couple small pieces of tape. It can look a little choppier. It's up to you. We can. Which way would you like? Do you want me to help you cut it so it's rounded? Yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll go ahead and tape the whole word dad, and then we'll get back to you. All right, so if we're making these edges more rounded, you can have an adult, or if you're big enough to use scissors, you can kind of cut the tape so that it's a little bit more rounded to finish out your letters. So to spell dad, it's just D-A-D. So we do a straight line down, and then a big curve for the D. For the A, we do a big line down, another big line down, and then a little line across. And then the last letter is the same as the first. So we do a big line down and a big curve to make our other D. All right, so now that we have step one completed, it's time to go to step two. So for this one, we're going to paint. Um, we have just acrylic paint that can wash off your hands um, if you need. Uh, or you can use, if you don't have paint at home, you can use markers or crayons and do the same type of thing. We, since we're using paint, we're going to put on paint shirts. This is just an old t-shirt for Colton. And then Kylie, I have a little apron for her to try. Just to protect our clothes so our clothes don't get ruined, okay? Good. Good job. All right, now we're all ready to paint. So I'm gonna put the paint onto this plate. What colors would you guys like? Um, brown. Brown. And, okay, so do you wanna do it browns colors for the, Kylie's dad likes the Cleveland Browns, so we're gonna paint hers browns colors. So what are they, orange and brown? And white. And white, okay. So I'm gonna do a little orange but we don't have brown, so we're gonna have to mix a couple colors to make brown. I'm gonna mix orange and blue to make brown. So if you have some paint at home, but not all the colors you want, sometimes you can mix paint together like this to make a different color. Good job. All right, so this is a little dark. Maybe we should add a little white to it so it's a little bit lighter brown. What do you think? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, now that we have our brown all mixed together and a couple of paint colors that Colton wanted added, we're gonna get started. So I'm gonna put the paint plate between you guys. You can use for this, you can use regular paint brushes, you can use a sponge brush, or you can even finger paint with your hands. Colton, which kind of paint brush would you like? Um, the orange there you go. Thank you. Kylie, you want this one? Let's start. All right. So and Kylie's going to make hers striped. So I'll show you. I helped draw some lines 
so it's a little bit of an outline or a pattern for her. So it's a little bit easier. So you can always ask your parent to help draw a pattern or a design on the background. All right, we'll go ahead and get started with our paint. Okay. Can you paint right over the tape? Mm -hmm. oh. You can paint right over the tape. The tape it will hold the letters in place. So we have them all painted. We finished step two and step three is to let them dry. We let ours dry out in the lawn in the sun for about 20 minutes. So they get all dry and the paint's not wet anymore. So then the last step is to remove the tape. That's step four. So we're gonna go ahead and gently, very gently just peel off our tape, okay? Just like that. Can you keep going and peel off the tape very gently? Yep, you kind of got to use your fingernails to get underneath it. Whoa. There we go. Good job. Good work. Nice. Last one, Kylie. Okay, so we took off all the tape for these ones. So Kylie has one that says dad for her father figure and Colton has one that says we love Papa for his. I'm gonna show you what you can do if you did it on poster board. I got this frame also from the dollar store. So we're gonna take this picture out and put this one right in this picture frame. There we go. So you can frame one if you do it on a paper or poster board, just like this for your father figure. All right, I hope you guys have a great weekend and make sure you tell your father figures on Sunday. Happy Father's Day. Hello, Cleveland. I'm Mr. Stevens. I'm an occupational therapist for Cleveland Municipal School District. And today, we're having fun outside playing. And it's Father's Day. It's our Father's Day um, fun with kids outside. We're recommending you get outside. And today we're gonna learn to throw, catch, and hit a baseball. So have fun with us. We're gonna get after it right now. And uh, let's get going. Right here. 
Here. We're going to put the ball here and we're going to throw it from our ear and catch it, okay? Alright, who's going to go first? Alright, you ready? Alright, got to catch. Put your hands together. Hands got to be together. Ready? Here we go. Alright, roll it back. Alright, Bailey, here we go. When we catch, we put our hands right by our shoulders. Ethan, Miles, huh? Yes. Right here. Miles. All right, you ready? Like this. Here we go. All right, Ethan, here we go. So when we hit, we line our foot up at the front of the plate in a straight line going back, and we bend our what? Knee. Knee. And place our hands by our ear. And we look at the ball. ball. When the ball comes, pardon me? I actually look at the ball when it comes in my hand. Right, watch you don't swing the bat, because you don't want to swing the bat when there's somebody near you. Okay, so. You good. So you look at the ball, and when the ball comes, you swing and hit the ball in front of the plate. plate. Yes. Like and then this? when you swing, yep. Yeah, hands have to be what? To yeah. together. Hands together. See that? Ethan? Hands together. Hands by your ears. Swing at the ball in front of the plate and finish over your what? Back. Shoulder. Shoulder. And then run to first base. All right, let's try. Yeah. So you hit the ball, run to first base. Ethan. I'm not Ethan doing Miles, come on. You get ready to hit. Here you go, run. Right, yeah, but there's no problem. Right there. There you run. Run. <laughs> Bailey, your turn. Hit. Awesome hit. There you go, run. Run. Run, Miles. Run to second. Oh, no, sorry. Run to first, Bailey. Friends, this is our this is our play for baseball today. It's a fun game, but there are challenges along the way. Sometimes it's never easy, just like life. But there's a lot of good. Spending time together outside is what's most important with your family together. Building fun times, relationships. <laughs> NFL says play 60 minutes every day. Mr. Stevens says do the same. Go outside and play together and have fun. Laugh a lot. Thank you. I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm in the Fulton, Memphis area. My wife and I and our three boys live in Edgewater. I live in the Lakeshore Collinwood Arts District. I live in Camps Corner area. I've lived in the West Park neighborhood for 21 years. For five years. I've lived in Cleveland all my life. 37 years. Majority of my life. All my life. 18 years. Cleveland's great. I mean, I love that there's always stuff to do. There's so many 
free things to do with kids. Best city in the country. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's a good, good city. The school system is awesome. I think Cleveland schools are making great progress. New things are happening at CMSD, you know, I want to be a part of that. So the Cleveland Plan was legislation that was put in place in 2012 to be able to transform Cleveland's public schools. The change in the school district in the last, you know, 10 years is one that's focused on high performance, that's focused on providing school choice for families so they can figure out what school is best for them, and moving into a period where we're acknowledging that education needs need to change for our students, for our economy, for our families, and how do we meet families where they are to do that. The schools offer far more choices. They're more career-oriented. All kids don't learn the same. All kids aren't interested in the same things. I, I like the fact that we do have those choices. If your child needs a particular approach or needs in the kind of classroom to help meet their, their growth, uh, I think the Cleveland plan is about providing the options to I've just been really happy with the school here. It's just, I'm just so grateful that I found this school and that my child is here. It's nice. It's very nice to know um, I can choose what school. I can um, have my options of going to each building and seeing what is the best choice for my kids. When I did research, I was looking for the best schools that Cleveland had to offer. The teachers are great. They work well with us. They constantly keep in communication with us, and that's really the key is like that we're all involved. It's nice to walk into a school and have them know who you are. The structure of the academics is very, very rigorous, and I love it. I am a 2016 graduate of Cleveland Early College High School on the John Hay campus. Choice for me was great because I had the opportunity to really take ownership of my education. The high school graduation push and the increase is definitely a result of what the district is doing in order for the schools to thrive. Because now you have better schools, quality schools, and when you can push that, students see that you care about them. Now they begin to care about their education. We stand with 117 private colleges that are gonna offer every student in the public school system of Cleveland, Ohio, free college tuition. Say Yes to Education is an initiative in our city which offer wraparound support services to students and their families so that students can be most successful in their K through 12 education. Probably the biggest headline of Say Yes is that it's gonna offer last dollar tuition scholarships to students um, to any public two or four year institution as well as accredited Pell eligible career and technical trainings. Families at this point have no choice to say that, oh, my child, I can't afford college, or I'm not gonna send my child to college because that opportunity is there. The barriers, the social, economic, demographic, all of the things that especially a lot of urban kids have to endure, which prevents a lot of them from prospering, are definitely minimized. It's amazing. Um, I couldn't be happier with the way Cleveland is moving up. We are doing what we set out to do in 2012 with the Cleveland Plan. We are actually seeing results, and that's a great thing. It's an incredible accomplishment. We don't see this kind of growth in the urban district elsewhere in this country. The children are the future. Anything that we do, we have to plan for them to get a great education, a quality education that is technologically advanced so that they are prepared. And with that preparation, you can't stop us cannot stop us. So look out every other city because Cleveland is on their way. <laughs> Everyone gets counted. The 2020 Census. Go to my2020census.gov. Get counted. The census counts the population and then decides, based on that population, how much money communities receive for important services like schools, hospitals, roads, fire departments, and police departments. Go to my2020census.gov. Counting the number of people in the census determines how much federal money is allocated for schools. After this pandemic,
People realize how important schools are now more than ever. Go to my2020census.gov. Counting the number of people in the census determines how much federal money is allocated for roads, and we all use those. Go to my2020census.gov. Counting the number of people in the census determines how much federal money is allocated for hospitals. Since this pandemic, we are very aware of how important those are. Go to my2020census.gov. Counting the number of people in the census determines how much federal money is allocated for fire departments. We all need those. Go to my2020census.gov. Counting the number of people in the census determines how much federal money is allocated for police departments and we all feel safer with those. Go to my2020census.gov. So how do I complete mine? You can complete your census in one of three ways. Go online to my2020census.gov and you can complete your form online or you can call 844-330-2020. Or you can mail in your completed census form to the National Processing Center at 100 Logistics Avenue, Jeffersonville, Indiana, 47144. Just do it, be counted. Be counted, my2020census.gov.